What makes a road trip movie both so hard to pull off and so fun to watch is its spontaneity. The free-flowing structure provided by the genre gives the screenwriter a lot of freedom, which makes it really hard to write, as it doesn't come with a do-it-yourself, predictable beat-by-beat -beat structure of other story genres, but if it is well-written, really fun to watch because it doesn't follow those tired story beats. There's a lot to love about the film Paper Moon. The unconventional, pessimistic father-daughter relationship makes every interaction between the two leads much more entertaining than any sappy, optimistic interaction. I sold that car. Oh. Well then, you and I are going to have a lot of nice walks together, aren't we? <laughs> then you can take me to Lincoln. You bet I will. Where's Lincoln? Clear over there. Oh boy, you think I'm going to take you clear over there just to get you to some depot? Then keep going east. We'll hit one in Sylvan Grove. Where's Sylvan Grove? Right here. Well, that, that'll take us down through Lucas. You gotta go through something to get this over. I am not complaining, I'm just saying that'll take it through Lucas. But what I love most about the movie is how it embraces the road and all the possibilities that it brings. Each of the three acts offers something completely new that you never could have guessed at the beginning of the film. Some long movies feel short. Paper Moon is a short movie that feels shorter. True to the spirit of a road, each of its three acts ends with a car driving into the distance. Each act is also divided into scenes. Each scene naturally has a beginning and an ending. If it'll make that woman happy, I'll take it. These contribute to making the film feel shorter than it is. Just like a radiator cap, Paper Moon's pacing is sleek and smooth, propelling you along the story until you blink and you're staring at the credits with a stupid smile. An aspect of the film that makes it flow together so seamlessly is these beginnings. It's basic film rhetoric to start a scene with a wide shot. That way the scene is established with a good look at the environment so the viewer knows where each character is in comparison to one another. Plenty of scenes in Paper Moon start with wide shots, but just as, if not more often, they start with the opposite, a close-up. I mean, we're going to Washington on the QT. Close-ups are used to dial in on a particular subject and show that it is important. By starting with a close-up, director Peter Bogdanovich leads the scene with its pivotal piece. The subject of the close-up, whether it be a person or an inanimate object, informs the viewer what the scene is about, or at least an important part of it. It also immediately plants a question in the viewer's mind. Why show me this? To keep the viewer engaged, questions are good. Immediate scene starting questions are better. These opening close-ups are also used for humor. The cut between the ending of the last scene and the opening close-up can accomplish this. or even by pulling back the camera from a close-up into a wide. Look real nice in that ribbon. The transition between the last line of dialogue in the scene and opening close-ups are seamless, connecting the two scenes in clever ways. These clever connections allow the audience to glide through the film from scene to scene. These connections make the experience feel like a natural progression of events rather than separate scenes in a movie. The filmmakers of Paper Moon also use a technique called deep focus. The deep focus always gives the eyes something to observe in the distance as the story progresses in the foreground. Sometimes the background even contains details that reveal character, such as this scene where Moses is getting a train ticket for Addie to send her off to her aunt. The shot captures both the ticket seller and Moe's in clear focus from each angle, shot, and reverse shot. This is the main story and so it's in the foreground. But if your eyes would wander to the back, you'd see a third plane where that deep focus also captures Addie who stands still, alone, and dejected. The reverse shot also captures a third plane, a group of kids that can be seen playing in a field through the window. Put together, 
These two shots highlight Addie's sad current situation and the childhood that she doesn't have. This separation is a part of Addie's character. She is isolated from childhood and adapted to the harsh reality of adulthood. Because this scene comes before we know about how clever she is about making money and her smoking habit, it gives us a clue about her detachment from childhood even before we really know her, all through some clever composition and a large depth of field. By using this technique instead of making the background all blurry, it gives the viewer something extra to look at while the story rolls on. It's important to note that this never distracts from what should be followed. The witty dialogue and clever antics remain in the foreground in both senses of the word. What it does do is make the world that the story takes place in more immersive. Focus is used to direct the audience's eyes towards what's important. Constantly putting a plane of focus on the environment gives it an extra dimension, making it an important, fundamental part of the movie. The time and place is always a part of the frame, as we can see the effect that the Great Depression has on the people around them in sharp focus. A real sense of depth can be felt. The interesting compositions at different levels of depth adds to the feeling of freedom that a road trip movie needs. Instead of being stuck in one focal length, the movie looks like you can go from one end of the room to the other freely, even when it's outside. This lends itself to the spontaneous structure of the screenplay. The freedom makes the viewer feel like the number of clever swindles and unfortunate problems that Addie and Mose could get into is infinite. It also adds a grounded sense of realism to the picture, because that's how eyes see in real life. Paper Moon can be categorized into a lot of genres. The con man buddy comedy, the father acceptance drama, each of these come with templates. Paper Moon takes the template of the road trip movie, which has no template, because the movie leads in any direction you want it to. Depth of field and close-ups are both techniques the filmmaker uses to direct the gaze of the audience towards something important. I could even go so far as to say that the only difference between good and bad filmmaking is being able to show what is important. Paper Moon does that in many ways. The deep focus and scenes starting with close-ups are only two techniques that make it the outstanding movie that it is. Paper Moon is one of the most inventive movies I've ever seen, so I really do hope this video convinces you to check it out if you haven't already. If you haven't already seen it though, sorry about the spoilers. I hope you have a wonderful day, thank you for watching, like the video, subscribe for more, ring the bell, save it to your watch list, and just go ahead and click all the buttons down there. Goodbye. As you desire me, so shall I come to you. However you want me, so shall I be.